Well, hey there, you're on the internet, eyes and free time, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Now, today's ink, I haven't sampled before, and it's by the Australian brand of Toucan and Umber, which is their darker brown. Sienna was sort of their lighter brown. Yep. Now, all these Toucan inks are meant to be mixed, uh, so you can sort of alter them, create your own colors, all that stuff. I actually haven't done that yet, but actually I was uh, quite looking forward to Umber and I found I quite enjoyed it. So yeah, the two pens I used were these. This is a Pilot Plumix with its standard little stub, which is you know, fairly moderate. And then this is my Pilot Vanishing Point and it has a broad nib in it, and it actually has in it right now. People often ask me if I have favorite inks. I have favorite inks for certain situations, uh, like for dressing envelopes, or uh, that dry quickly, or that don't feather on cheap paper, or whatever. However, if there was ever an ink that was going to make the most of those situational lists, it would be Noodler's Walnut. And that's what I keep in here, because it performs beautifully in this pen. Uh, yeah, so but we shall return to that in a moment. Now, let's look at some comparable inks. This is Toucan Umber, and actually, hang on. Nope, that's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Okay, so here we go. Here's Toucan Umber, and here's Noodler's Walnut, which you might be able to tell is a bit richer, a bit darker. It has a little more red in it. And actually, here. And it is. It's quite saturated. It's a very rich, nutty brown, but it has some beautiful red to it. And in fact, I'm this, since this was one of my first ink reviews, I'm going to be re-reviewing this because my methods and whatever have evolved. So yeah. And in one of my tests, I say that uh, it looks almost like uh, like if you tilt your head and squint, it almost looks like walnut. But yeah. So umber does have some similarities. Now here's Hoha Umkinga Sepia Brown. Which is actually very different, and now that I'm thinking about it, why did I include it? Uh, this is much more gray-brown, apparently, but it has these beautiful tan bits all through it. So I'm looking forward to testing that. And then here's Akarman 23, and I'm gonna massacre this, Burkecht Hags, which I know means something of The Hague. But, uh, yeah, this is much more, like, uh, nutty brown. This is a little more gray to it. And in fact, hmm, interesting. I have played around with this a good bit. Uh, I do like this ink. But anyway, so there are your comparables for Toucan Umber. Uh, yeah, fascinating chromatography. So let's check this stuff out. Now, you can definitely tell where the initial drop was put, and this is a really interesting color. It's blue, but it's like a gray slate blue kind of thing. And then here we get the closest thing we see to the umber we see on the page. But then we have this bright orange. And I doubt the camera will even pick it up, but it's this... It's almost like highlighter blue all through here. It's so pale, but it's there, trust me. And then here's where I let it dry, which is not how you're supposed to do it. And you can see the dot got darker, and maybe the brown is less there, but the orange is brighter and the blue is taller, but you can't see it. So yeah. Now, I wanted to see what this ink could stand up against. And the truth is, it washes out great with water. I had no trouble. None at all. And if you're familiar with the vanishing point, it can be a little difficult to clean out because of the internal system. No problem. So, yeah, here you can see a lot of the brown washed away, but the gray remained. The one-third bleach solution turned it a weird bluish-purple color. I can't explain that. Ammonia pen flush, I knocked the camera. Uh, really got it moving. Hydrogen peroxide mostly moved the brown bits around, but yeah. Anyways, paper test. Top down in density, Clairefontaine, 90 grams per square meter. Yep. It's a brown, and it's a, like a, it's a, it's their darker brown. And I also say somewhere in here that the more you lay on uh, the page, the less gray it is. Because I feel like if you see through here, you get, you get gray, but then you see here, it's very brown. Which I thought was interesting. 
Now that standard little stub took 17 seconds to dry, but uh, the broad vanishing point took 20. And you get a lot of shading, which is something that thinner inks do. Uh, is it too thin? No, not necessarily. Honestly, I just already have found my walnut, and I'm so happy with walnut that it's hard for anything else to compare. So that's a personal thing. But anyways, uh, yeah, no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no sheen, flow steady. And then even the water test kind of surprised me. Now the dots you can see, but you can even see bits of these little X's. And you can see bits of the writing. And I was not anticipating anything to remain behind. So the fact that anything remained behind impressed me. Now, next up is Fabriano. It's 85 grams per square meter. You get wonderful shading on here too. Uh, and again, the more you lay on, the more brown it is and less gray. But that little stub took 16 seconds to dry. The broad took 20. Now, I'd say the flow on this, at least for my sample, was a five out of 10 just went. It wasn't wet, wasn't dry, just went. So yeah, again, because it's slightly thinner, you get a lot of shading. It's a very nice uh, darker brown. If you want something that isn't a tan, but is a brown, this is nice. Yeah, uh, no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no sheen. All good in that regard. And again, the water test kind of surprised me. Again, the dots from the broad are so clear and so there. But you can still see the little X's and you can see parts of the writing. And again, I do these water tests uh, after it's been on the paper about a half an hour total, uh, maybe more like 20 minutes uh, for the cheaper papers. Now, next up is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter. And honestly, I know most people love dot paper, but I love quadrilateral paper or graph paper. And the problem is with uh, less saturated inks, it you can see all the lines through it, which is kind of, I, I prefer those to, I prefer an ink to be opaque enough to sort of block those out. But is it a deal breaker? No, because again, this is a very nice brown. Here you can see it is kind of grayish and a little thin, but here it gets very dark. You can barely, barely see those lines. Very rich brown. But again, because it's a thinner, thinner ink, you get much better shading. It's very pretty. The uh, standard little stub in the blue mix took 14 seconds. The broad took 18. Uh, yeah, again, no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no sheen. Very well behaved in that regard. And again, in the water test, the dots from the broad vary there. You can still see little bits of the X's. A lot of it's gone. And uh, yeah, most of the writing is really, really gone. But a little bit remains. Next up is Tomoya River Paper, which is known for drawing out dry times, but also shading and sheen, and it definitely did. However, it kind of, for me, looking at it, it made me notice the thinness of it. I mean, here I laid it on really thick because I wanted to see if I get some sheen or at least some shine or something. And you do get an incredible breadth of shading. I mean, look at how light it can get and how dark it can get. You can get a lot of shading out of this ink on this paper. However, in the writing, it, it almost starts to approach wateriness, which is not great. But the paper did draw out dry times, which is something that it does. So that plume mix took 18 seconds. The broad took 25, which isn't bad. You know, it's, it, you know, it's, it's logical. It's very normal. And because this ink isn't terribly dark, we don't get the same degree of echo or show through we might see with other brands version of a dark brown. If anything, I mean here we're lifting it off the page and we can't see anything really except for the scrubby but I was laying it on and laying it on and laying it on really wanting to see if I get some sheen or something out of it. We don't. But yeah there's no bleed, no feather, no spread. No sheen. And uh, this paper loves to let ink slide away when you add water but it didn't completely let go here which is nice. You can tell which lines and which dots where the broad. You put more ink down, the more there's probably going to be remaining after you try and wash it away. But you can see with this plume mix, you got the top bit of the W, part of the A, not a lot else. With the broad, you got part of the W, part of the A, part of the T, and a vague bit of the E, R. Yeah, so a little bit remains, a little something, something there. Now for the next three tests, I just used the plume mix, except to write the name. 
And this is the world's worst 20 pound copier paper. And the thing is, I like, kind of like walnut because it's one of the reasons I like walnut. If we look at this, we don't get much spread down there. That's what we're looking at. We don't get much spread. Not a lot. And we don't get much feathering. In fact, we get almost none. We do get a wooliness, and we do lose a lot of the shading, but we do have a little bit of it. You see? Still a little bit left. Took one second to dry. Very well behaved. We do get some echo, some show through, but even the broad didn't fully make it through. It almost did, but not. If you had to write on both sides, it could be a lot worse. Uh, I think you could, depends on how sensitive you are to it. But this was where it started to turn around for me. So more absorbent papers tend to draw the ink in, make it harder to wash out. And that is absolutely what happened here. We can see that blue slate color and look at how clear and how there it is. It got, you know, it's lighter because some of it washed away, but if you had to recover that, you absolutely could. And also I kind of like how it looks like they're on fire. That little orange bits washing off. Yeah, I mean, look at this. You can still see every single individual line in that. Now, next up is me notebook paper, which is thinner than 20 pound copier paper. It's very cheap. It's very standard for school children in the United States. Lately, it's been feathering, but here we don't really get much or really any feathering. And I actually only completed this test, uh, I think four or five days ago. And we still get a little bit of shading, which is nice. You see in lazy and brown. Two seconds to dry. Very well behaved. There is no bleed. Not even in the broad. You get a little hint of something, but no bleed. You can see like a little bit of an echo, but nothing even coming close to the other side, which is lovely. If you have to use this paper and you like brown, and you want something with a little bit of water resistance, because let's look at this. Again, that's pretty clear. Didn't feather, didn't explode. You get a little bit of the brown and orange stuff coming around. But if you absolutely had to recover that, you probably could. Now, lastly is Moleskine notebook paper, which I hate because it hates ink. The thing is, could be a lot worse. Is it perfect? No. Could be a lot worse. We do get some wooliness. Took five seconds to dry. But we don't really get like full on feathering. Or if we do, it's very minor. It's not those big distracting cactus spines we often see. We get a little bit wanting to come through the back. It could be a lot worse. And then like in the broad, it's all, it's all the downstrokes for writing umber. So that kind of makes sense. Honestly, compared to what we usually see, that's fantastic. However, Moleskin does things with its water test that we don't see in any of the other tests. And, I mean, that often happens. And here we see it again. Some of the brown and orange really, really remain. And then a lot of the slate blue stuff just is gone. And then that starts to feather and explode. And I don't know what's going on here. So, yeah, there's Moleskin for you. But yeah, so... There you go, for your consideration, Toucan Umber. Now, I am a absolute diehard fan of Noodler's Walnut. It has some beautiful red bits to it. Behaves very well on cheap paper, semi-waterproof. Actually, it's a good bit waterproof, you lose the brown, but anyways. Uh, it does have silt, which means that when you leave it in a pen for two weeks or more, the gray stuff that remains after the water test will kind of start to build up in your feet. It'll still write, it'll still do all that, but, and it'll seem like you fully cleaned it out, but then if you open up the pen, you know, if you remove the nib, you'll see just a little bit of haze of gray in there. So, not ideal. However, for me, since it's so minor, it is also so worth it. So, I love my Noodler's Walnut. However, Toucan Umber is probably about as close as I've been able to find since then. And it shades a lot, Super easy to clean out of your pens. Behaves well on cheap paper. Think about it. For your consideration from the Triple N Network, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching. Bye.